Hello everyone and thank you all so much for joining me today on my brand new YouTube channel Wicked Wide Z32. Today we're going to be talking about importing a 25 year old car into the US from Canada. It's actually a fairly simple process. A lot of people think it's more complicated than it actually is. And that's actually the process I went through when I imported my 91 uh, 300ZX into the US uh, just this past summer. Um, it's a right hand drive model that was originally imported from Japan to Canada about two years ago. Uh, since then, I actually picked it up in the summer and brought it back to the U.S. So there are a few steps that we're going to go over today. First is going to be finding the car. Uh, second is going to be how to get the car through the border. And third is going to be registering the car. So this car is registered in Massachusetts. Uh, it might be different for your state. Uh, just make sure that you look into the, the rules and the regulations and all that, that, whatever documentation that you need to register it into your state. Just make sure that you do your homework on that. But what I'm going to be talking about is registering for Massachusetts. So first I'm going to talk about finding the car. It took me about several months to, um, of like serious, serious hunting until I found the car that I was looking for. Um, so I used sites like a Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, eBay, and the last one that I used, which is where I found this car, was Kijiji. Uh, Kijiji is kind of like a Craigslist, but for uh, Canada. Um, it is a Canadian site. I'll make sure that I drop the link for it in the description below. Now, I got this car up in Quebec City, so uh, if any of you know how Canada, how Canada kind of works with the east and west, uh, you know, Quebec is mainly French. So the gentleman that I spoke to, uh, his first language was French. Luckily, he did speak English uh, fairly well. Um, however, some other people that I reached out to did not know any English, or if they did, they refused to you know, communicate with me via English. So just try to keep that in mind. So Google Translator is a good thing to use as well. Um, and people actually might be more willing to kind of talk and communicate and work things out with you. So once you arrange to pick up the car, there are going to be a few things that uh, the previous owner is going to need to provide to you. Now in the state of Massachusetts, typically that would be like a title or a previous registration, something like that. Now from my understanding is, in at least this is what I was told um, by the previous owner, is that they don't have titles, they have a registration. And the registration is, uh, at least for Quebec, it's a little tiny piece of paper about yay big. and. Um, it serves just at like a title so it has the registration showing that the car is really legal but it also has all the vehicle information and then when you turn over the car to somebody else you sign the back of the registration similar to a title at least for Massachusetts so you're gonna need that title and it's gonna need to be signed by the previous owner secondly you're gonna need a bill of sale so you need those two documents so what I did next is I loaded up the car onto the trailer towed it back to the border now at the border they're gonna want you to prove uh, Proof of ownership, so that's what the bill of sale is for, and the registration, so you're going to give them all that documentation. Um, what they're also going to do is they're going to check the manufacturer date. Now, this can vary from car to car. On the 300ZX, um, there is a little placard in the engine bay where they can run the chassis code, and it'll actually tell you the manufacturer date. And sometimes it's on the door sill, so they're checking that manufacturer date just to ensure that the car is indeed 25 years or older, um, so that way you can legally import. So once they verify the chassis numbers and verify the production uh, date, uh, what they're going to do is they're going to take your forms and they're going to give you uh, a couple forms. The first one that they're going to give you is an HS7, and another one they're going to give you is an EPA form. And they, thirdly, they, they might even give you a, um, an importation form, which is essentially the uh, port of importation. You're going to have those three forms which you're going to need when you go to the registry, at least for Massachusetts. So they're going to give you those forms, you're going to fill them out to the, the best of your ability. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them, or you can, um, when you go to the registry, you can ask them. Uh, make sure that you, the registry you're going to, though, is uh, knowledgeable on how to do the process, but we'll get into that a little later. So, and then after they, um, they give you all that paperwork at the board of the HS7, the EPA, and the importation form, uh, you're also going to have to pay uh, importation tax. There might be more, it might be less. Um, if you have any questions about that, what you can do is you can call the um, U.S. Customs and verify uh, whatever the, the fee is going to be. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you go through the border they are going to charge you a fee to uh, import it as well as when you register the vehicle. So once you get all the forms all you got to do is just take the car back home. Um, so the last and final process to get this car road legal is, uh, is a very uh, 
it's simple as long as you have the proper documentation. Um, so what you're going to need to do first is you have to go and you have to get the car insured. The reason you get the car insured is because you're going to need that RMV1 form from your insurance company to bring to the registry. The reason you get the RMV1 form is so you can be like, here you go, you give it to the registry and be like, here you go, car is uh, insured already and all they got to do is give you the plates. Um, now for this one, all I did was transfer the plates from my USDM model to this one. Um, so that was a pretty simple process. So this is for Massachusetts, keep in mind. So the forms that I needed in order to register it and get it plated and all my paperwork done is I needed the RMV1, I needed the HS7, I needed that EPA form, and I needed the, the port of uh, importation. And the issue I had the first time is I went to a, a smaller registry and they were not familiar on how to do the paperwork. I had all the paperwork, however they were telling me, oh, you don't have this, you don't have that. I said, that's what this is right here and they they told me no so i went to a bigger registry um in like a bigger city in massachusetts and they were able to get all the work done no problem whatsoever so once you bring them all those forms obviously you're gonna you're gonna hand them all to them they're gonna go over the paperwork they're gonna ask you a couple questions about the just the, the specifications of the car however most of it should be in the rmv1 form so once they've gotten all the forms they've gone through it all and make sure that it's all uh squared away and looks good they're gonna print you out your registration and there you go and it's simple as that now uh, what my insurance company t told me is that they wanted a copy of the registration just because it was a little uh, funky with the VIN because if you do not know the uh, JDM models do not come with a 17 digit VIN they come with a chassis code that's why I've been saying this chassis code the whole time not VIN number uh, they do not come with a full 17 digit VIN so when they enter this into their computer the computer is expecting a full VIN when it doesn't pop as a full VIN it pops up as an error so you want to make sure you take that registration back and give it to your insurance company say here look they approved it it's all set one last thing I'm going to recommend is to make sure that all that documentation your HS7 EPA your import form all that make sure that they make copies of that at the registry or make copies on your own because once you hand all that in it's gone they they keep it so if anything happens with the car or any for any reason whatsoever I, I always try to keep my cars fully documented I have folders and folders for, for this car mainly but soon to be this car as well of just receipts and paperwork and everything for the car uh, so I would definitely recommend uh, staying on top of that all right everyone well that's all I have for you today if you have any comments or questions about importing a vehicle into the US um, you can feel free to comment below uh, also check out some of the sites that I'm gonna put in the description um, all the information is on there as well as you can always just reach out to uh, US Customs and give them a call they are happy to answer questions so just remember to be polite obviously other than that guys that's all I really have for this video uh, make sure that you like and subscribe for some future videos on the build on this car gonna be pretty pretty insane thank you all so much and catch you next time